Hey everybody, welcome back to our materials informatics series. Today, I wanna to talk about Honagumi. Honagumi is a software package that a couple of my students put together, which I think is going to change the way that we code for optimization, particularly in the era of large language models. Let me describe it with a couple slides. So first off, this was not made by me. This was made by the wonderful Sterling Baird, shown here number three from the left and with assistance from Andrew Falkowski, two from the left. You'll know Andrew from uh, the co-host of my podcast and Sterling who's done many fantastic things. So Sterling did most of the coding and Andrew put together some really nice uh, additional inf supportive information, some docs and some tutorials and some of the coding as well. So let's dive into what is Hanagumi. Um, I'm gonna try and in this brief video, describe what the package is, what its main idea is, and then in a subsequent video, which will be followed after below in the video description, I'll have some tutorials of how you actually use it. But here's my goals for this video. First, I wanna convince you, if you don't know, believe me, that Bayesian optimization is probably more complex than you think. Two, that Honagumi provides an easy to use scaffold. Think of it like a code template. Right? In fact, that's what the word Hanagumi means. We show you a picture here of like a Japanese house. Hanagumi is a Japanese word that means skeletal framework. And just like once you build the skeleton of a house, you can then do the fine details of decorating it or modifying it as you see fit once you have that skeleton in place. That's what Honagumi is going to do. By the way, fun fact, Sterling here, uh, right here, he actually lived in Japan for a couple of years, fluent in Japanese. And so he's a big fan of that title. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna show you how large language models can be used to fill in the gaps once we have a scaffold in place. Okay, so let's show you how it's done. Um, first off, why do, why do we care about this? Maybe you, like me, have found yourself sort of elbows deep in a project that seemed simple at first blush and turned out to be anything but simple. Here's an example of me working on sprinklers. I thought it would be an easy fix. It was horrible. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're calling a friend for help, trying to figure out what's going on. This was the case with a lot of the Bayesian optimization that we uh, were seeing uh, happen in, in the field. We obviously have been doing this for quite a while. And so people would reach out to us and say like, hey, I thought this was gonna be easy. I tried, it was really hard. Can you help me out? And Sterling is great. And basically he had so many people asking over and over that he's like, I'm just gonna build a tool that it, essentially does what I do for these people. They come to me with a problem and I help them set to set up their code framework so that they can adapt it easily to their specific scenario. That's Honagumi, right? So um, why is this important for material science? I think it's important because material science does tend to have relatively complex optimization problems. Let's take alloy design, right? In alloy design, first off, you might have multi-fidelity data, data coming from, right, you've got thermal calc data, you've got instron data, you could have other sources of data. And then you have usually multiple objectives. You care about density, you care about strength, you care about oxidation resistance, on and on, right? Multiple objectives. Um, we very often have a mixture of both continuous variables, like let's say sintering temperature, as well as categorical variables, things like, you know, was it cast or rot or forged or annealed, right? These different things are very different categories. Um, we have this compositional linear constraint where we represent a formula as adding up to one, right? Al203, in, in alloys, we usually boil that down so that all the values add up to one, right? And we're very often high dimensional, right? You can have not just two or three different, you know, elements, but 10, 11, you can have lots of different alloys present, elements present in your alloy. And then finally, sometimes we say, okay, well, it has to have this base alloy and we, you know, identify it. But then we say, but we're going to allow it to swap out one additional component from many different ones that are available. We call that a n choose k nonlinear constraint. So all of those things together make optimization hard, right? All those things, this is what, what is that? Like six uh, different categories or conditions, if you will. In each of those, you can have sort of a simple scenario. So the simple scenario, like the basic would be like single fidelity, not multi-fidelity, single objective, not multiple, continuous variables as opposed to a mixture, um, no constraints, low dimensionality, no n choose k constraints. But there's also the possibility that you're going to have advanced or you know, advanced Bayesian optimization, which is gonna include the more difficult versions of these. And what we observe is that the amount of code necessary to implement Bayesian optimization, whether you're doing, you know, basic versus advanced, is very different. Um, now here in, what we use in Hanagumi is Axe. We like Axe, it comes from Meta, some people make Facebook, right? They have made some awesome free to use tools. Um, Axe is based on top of Bowtorch, which is based off of PyTorch, many other things, right? But we like Axe, and here you see that the basic implementation of Bayesian optimization is about 29 lines of code. 
But if you just turn on two things, high dimensionality and multiple objectives, all of a sudden you've tripled your code to 62 lines. And that's just two of the what six conditions we've got here, right? So I hope I've introduced this concept that maybe Bayesian optimization is more complex than you once thought, right? It's not just like, oh, here's my parameter space, search and find it. That can be a difficult parameter space. It can be constrained, it can be high dimensional, it can have you know issues, multiple objectives. So how can Hanagumi help us? Like I said before, it is able to provide a code template. And once you have that template, you can then either populate it yourself, fill in the gaps, or you can use a language model to do it. And I'll show you how. So here's a screenshot. Uh, I sort of did a, a quick screen grab. You see me scrolling through the website here. You can see the link there if you want to take a picture. And you're able to select from those sort of radio boxes on the different conditions, basic versus complicated. And what you'll see is that as you select these different things, in real time, the code block below gets updated to represent those. Now, this is not in material science context. It's written in a sort of generic context at first. But the point is that it provides this framework, which you can then further modify yourself. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual website so you can see this in action. Okay, so here's the website. Again, uh, if you look at the website, first thing you'll notice as you scroll down is you have this right here. This is the most important part. This is where you select the different parameters. Like, do you want multi? multi-objective or single objective? Do you want the default, which is Gaussian process, expected improvement, which you learned about in previous videos? Or do you want the fully Bayesian version, right? Um, you can select all these things and in real time, you're seeing it get updated. Some of the other things that this website has are down here is tutorials and concepts, right? If, for example, you're like me and the first time you saw it, you're like, wait a minute, what do you mean by fully Bayesian versus Gaussian process? Well, Actually, we can tell you all about it. What does it mean to do Bayesian, like Gaussian process with expected improvement versus a fully Bayesian Gaussian process, right? You can learn all about it. We've put together some really nice content here. Like I said, Andrew and Sterling are really sharp guys. They put together some custom visualizations that go with this that I think makes it really slick to learn about this. And then also we have some really nice tutorials and these are aimed at, um, these are aimed at material science. Like here's optimizing max phases with featureization. Super cool. You can, if you know if you know about max phases, these are an interesting new class of materials that are coming up. So here you can actually show you how we would use Hanagumi to implement optimization. Watch for these in a subsequent video. I'll follow, I'll follow up this video with those. Okay, so that's Hanagumi. Just a couple of slides here. You can see that there's also some, some additional things that it can do. One thing it does, which I think is pretty slick, is it takes invalid configurations and you can't even select them. So for example, if you're doing single objective, then it would not make sense to have a Pareto front, right? A Pareto front is for uh, analyzing multiple objectives. And so it doesn't give the option of selecting it, which is nice, right? Um, and that said, as you saw on the website, we have more than just the six ones I showed you previously. We now have actually 10 different conditions, right? The model, the objective, whether or not you have existing data to start with, um, is there a custom threshold where any solution has to be above or below a certain you know, feature? Um, is it single fidelity or multi-fidelity? Is this going to be done in batches or not, right? Um, lots of stuff is already in place and it's evolving quickly. We have ideas in mind to add a bunch of other ones you can see over here, like asynchronous optimization or contextual variables or predefined candidates or user-specified noise, right? Is this either fixed or variable or inferred? or the option to do multi-task optimization. And obviously some tools are gonna to be coming out for metrics and visualization. So we really think that this is gonna make people, make it a lot easier for people doing Bayesian optimization by providing these templates, okay? Another cool thing that we've done uh, is that I showed you the link to the, the concepts, docs, and tutorials, but there's also right here, if you notice, on the right-hand side of any of these windows, let's say that you're looking at this the first time and you're like, I don't know what an order constraint is, or I don't know what multi versus single objective is. Well, if you hover over this little icon here on the right, up will pop this interactive tooltip where it describes to you briefly what that condition represents. So you can make the right choice of one versus the other. And if you still don't know, we actually have some links on a bunch of these to the docs or the tutorials, which will explain it in greater detail, right? So here, for example, the links to some of these docs, some of those tutorials, you can see, you know, you're able to click on those and it will take you right to them. And they provide a really good explanation of just if you want, I, I think everyone should actually understand the fundamentals of Bayesian optimization as opposed to just using it like a black box, which honestly a lot of packages do. This sort of uh, demystifies the black box nature a little bit, explains it in a simple enough way to grasp and makes the coding really easy for you to update it with your own content, right? Okay, briefly now, let me talk about how large language models can be used to fill in the gaps. And to do that, I'll show you one of the tutorials right now, okay? So let's say that you are trying to optimize a new 3D printer 
and you have some constraints, right? So I don't know if any of you have done 3D printing before, but there's typically a couple parameters that you can choose to optimize before you ever use the printer, like the X offset, the Y offset, the density of the infill, the layer height, and then there's a category of your infill type. Do you want a honeycomb fill, a gyroid, lines, rectilinear, right? So here we have five uh, dimensions that we're going to explore solutions over, right? But we're gonna also introduce some constraints. First off, we uh, maybe we only have 30 trials, so you only have 30 tests that you can do, right? And your boss says that when you make this, you only want the part to be, every time that you do a practice run, it can't cost more than $13. And you know from the provider of this instrument that there is an equation that describes the cost. It's based off of the infill density and the layer height. So for example, the cost is equal to this equation here, 16.32 times the infill density minus 3.73 times the layer height, right? So that's something that would have been provided, but you could also have your own custom equation. So our job here is to now do the optimization over these five variables, one of which is continuous and one, uh, and also to introduce a linear constraint that we can't go over $13 on any given run. So if we do that, let's go ahead and use Hanagumi to do that. We're gonna pop over here to Hanagumi. We have to select the right uh, boxes. Okay, we're doing single objective. We're only looking for strength because instead of monitoring cost, we're just gonna put a, a constraint on cost instead of optimizing for both simultaneously. So we have a linear constraint and we also have a categorical, right? We have this guy right here. So now this code has been updated in real time. So I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna hop over here to our language model of choice. And I'm gonna say, here is a code template for optimization. And then I'm going to say, now populate this template based on my actual experiment. And there, I'm just gonna drop in the exact stuff from the tutorial. So I'll go back to my tutorial where we had, where we described what we were trying to do. Let's just take this and because it's a language model, it's gonna do a pretty good job, right? We'll come over here. We're gonna drop that in and we're gonna ask it to do its thing. Okay, so let's walk through this. First thing we see is that it's using the Axe client. Um, its objective is now part strength. Again, it read the text that we had above and knew that we should do our primary objective as strength. It's got the four parameters here plus the categorical one, so it's got all five. Here it's using, it says mock-up strength function, so that's a dummy function. We don't know what the actual strength is from a function. Instead, that's something that you would print the part and then measure the strength. So this right here is just a temporary one so that you have something in place as an objective function. It's a dummy one though. Um, and it also made up a penalty or bonus one based off of infill type if you want, uh, which is kind of cool. So that's our dummy thing there. Um, here it is actually evaluating the cost using the correct equation that was given above. And then using the Axe client, it's delineating all the different parameters in your design space. The first four are continuous ones, right? It's saying that they are continuous. Uh, they are range ones, right? And they go between these appropriate ranges. Down here though is a categorical one and it's showing you that here's the different categories that you've got, okay? Um, here, right here in this part, it's showing you the parameter constraints. This is a linear constraint that you're forcing the overall one based off of what X3 and X4 are with this exact equation given in the, the notes there to be less than $13. And then here we're saying that it needs to be 30 runs where they're actually going to try and optimize this parameter space so that it maintains you know, a minimum while also being compatible with the constraints that have been given. So this is pretty awesome. Uh, a little bit of text that it's gonna spit out the end to tell you when it's completed, but this is exactly how we envision Hanagumi being used. You come with a description of what you're trying to do. You select the right conditions for it, and then you just tell it, go ahead and populate it. Now you might ask like, why not just go directly to your chat GPT and just type in like, hey, make an optimization script for me. Our experience is that it is much more likely to create code that has bugs or errors in it or be just incorrect in its reasoning of how to implement Bayesian optimization across all those different conditions. But if you provide a template, not surprisingly, in the LLM world, this is called structured prompts. These tend to do much, much better. Um, so we are really excited about Hanagumi. We have some more things coming with it, which I think are gonna make it even cooler. Uh, more on that later, for example, how we're going to integrate them with a large language model, which is gonna be rad. Um, but for now, you can check it out. We have some great resources. If you go to linktr.ee, linktree slash Honogumi, we have some cool resources. I'll be putting the videos here from this, as well as some other stuff that we're preparing. And um, stay tuned in the next video where we do a couple more tutorials using Honogumi. Okay, see you next time.